We've all heard the old saying that we know more about space than we do about the oceans beneath our feet. And even as we push the boundaries of exploration, it still holds true. More people have walked on the surface of the moon than have visited the deepest parts of the sea. Those few that have, however, made a startling discovery. There's a whole lot of life down there. And you might wonder why that's surprising. For a long time, we thought that the ocean deep was barren. Victorian scientist Edward Forbes dredged the ocean floor and found that the deeper he went, the less he found, concluding that simply nothing could survive below around 550 meters. But that theory was blown out of the water when strange deep sea animals called sea lilies were found three kilometers down below the Norwegian fjords in the mid 1860s. But it was becoming clear that the deeper you go, the tougher it gets. For a start, all that water above you exerts a massive pressure, increasing by one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth. In the deepest parts of the ocean, the pressure is more than a thousand times what we experience at sea level and can crush submarines like tin cans. It's also completely and utterly dark down there. Light from the sun only usually penetrates the ocean to a depth of around 200 meters. Beneath this depth, it's like one long night and no sunlight also means no heat. With water temperatures between minus one and four degrees Celsius, the cold, crushing, dark waters of the ocean depths are some of the most inhospitable on Earth. So it really was a surprise when the first visitors to the Challenger Deep, the deepest place in all of the oceans, found it to be teeming with life. Just how do the animals that live there survive? Pressure is a problem for us and other air-breathing animals because some parts of our bodies are filled with air, like our lungs, inner ear, and nasal cavities. At extreme depth, this air is tightly compressed and the structures that surround them are damaged beyond repair. Animals that frequently dive between the surface and the deep, like sperm whales, have evolved ways of dealing with this by swelling the veins in their ears and nose to fill the gaps, and even collapsing their lungs to drive out the air. Creatures that live at constantly crushing pressures just do away with the air spaces altogether. But even so, they face the threat of the intense cold and pressure solidifying the fats that make up their cell membranes and crushing the proteins that are important for their metabolism. To avoid this, the cell membranes are made out of lots of unsaturated fats, which is the same structure as in vegetable oil, to help them stay liquid at very cold temperatures. Plus, the cells collect small organic compounds called piezolites, which reinforce the proteins and stop the water pressure from squashing them. And interestingly, one type of piezolite called TMAO is what makes fish smell fishy. So deep sea fish have more TMAO, which means they smell fishier than shallow water fish. But piezolites also make the inside of the cell salty. Too many of these molecules make the cell saltier than the seawater outside, meaning it will rush in to balance the concentration, bursting the cells. For this reason, there is a limit to the depths that fish can live, which is about 8.2 kilometers. At the bottom of the Challenger Deep, at depths of nearly 11 kilometers, there may be no fish, but there is life. Giant shrimp-like amphipods, oversized single-celled organisms with shells made of glued together sand, and sea cucumbers half buried in the mud. While the amphipods were found to have some piezolites in their cells, it's still something of a mystery as to how these weird and wonderful creatures can take the pressure. Even when organisms have found ways to cope with intense pressure, there's still the problem of finding enough food to survive. The intense darkness means that no photosynthesis is possible at even moderate depths in the ocean, so you won't find any seaweed tickling your feet down there. Instead, animals must find their nutrition elsewhere. One of the most common food sources is what's delightfully called marine snow, and is less delightfully defined as a constant fine rain of dead stuff from the upper layers to the bottom of the ocean. Animals living at depth, like sea whip corals, sea pens, and giant sponges, opt for massive size or elaborate 
tendrils to help them intercept as much snow as possible as it drifts past. And occasionally, the mother load comes along in the shape of a dead whale. Whale falls like this are a feeding frenzy, attracting animals like hagfish and sleeper sharks from miles around. Within just 18 months, a 30-ton grey whale carcass could be stripped bare by hundreds of different animals, many of which have never been found elsewhere in the ocean. For those that prefer something more freshly dead, hunting in the pitch black emptiness requires some very special adaptations. Deep sea anglers use bioluminescent lures that glow in the dark to attract curious prey. Viciously sharp teeth must be able to cope with whatever is drawn to the lure, so they're often oversized, like the fang tooth, which can't even close its mouth properly. And there is one more unexpected source of nutrition at the bottom of the ocean. Volcanoes erupting beneath the water not only provide heat, a temporary relief from the frigid water, but they also deliver nutrients in abundance at so-called black smokers. These hydrothermal vents throw out sulfur-rich minerals that can fuel chemosynthetic bacteria, which use chemical energy the same way plants and other photosynthesizers use light energy. These in turn support a weird-looking community of tube worms and blind shrimp, among many others. Vents like these are so productive that some scientists think that these remarkable underwater oases could have been where life actually started billions of years ago. So, far from being barren of life like we once believed, certain parts of the deep oceans may actually represent the cradle of life itself, which is quite frankly, awesome. If you're wondering how you'd manage living underwater, check out Greg's video over on BBC Earth Lab and let me know what your favourite deep sea creature is in the comments below. Give us a like and if you're new, click subscribe for more science and nature videos from Earth Unplugged. Bye for now.